Good day. I'm uh, Roger Blumenthal, one of the co-editors of the Dyslipidemia Community on Cardiosource. It's a great pleasure to be with my longtime friend and colleague, Dr. Ty Gluckman. Ty trained at uh, Northwestern, and we were very privileged to have him at Johns Hopkins, where he was a chief fellow, and Ty has uh, been a, an expert in the ABCs of cardiovascular medicine. And in honor of today's presentation, and Northwestern ties with uh, Neil Stone at our cholesterol treatment committee, Ty's worn uh, purple for Northwestern color, so welcome, Ty. Thank you, Roger. It's a real pleasure to be here. Tell us, Ty, uh, what your interest was uh, on, in the ACC committee to help improve the implementation of the guidelines. Well, it's a great question, and I have the pleasure of sitting on a subcommittee of the Clinical Quality Committee, and the subcommittee is called the Best Practice Quality Improvement Committee. And it's a committee that's geared towards identifying gaps in care and trying to develop tools to be able to close those gaps. So uh, one of the issues that we always have when we have new sets of guidelines is how can clinicians um, easily and fairly quickly determine what risk scores are. Tell us uh, the, the, the tool that your um, committee uh, created and how clinicians can access it. So we felt it was very important to develop tools in the digital age that people could use easily or access easily either, either via a smartphone, a tablet device, or on their desktop. And we really wanted to make this usable. And with the introduction of the prevention guidelines and the compendium of those four guidelines, we felt it was really important to have a tool that was much more than a calculator, but it would allow one to be able to assess their atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk, but also was much more than a calculator in that it could provide them tools point of care to be able to make informed decisions, either right on the fly, or to be able to share with their patients, or to be able to give their patients access to for being able to do this at home and come back to them and follow up. Well, I think it's always very important for people to sort of see if they stop smoking, if they got their blood pressure down, how their risk score would change. And, and that's something that the, the uh, tool easily shows patients, correct? Correct. So the risk estimator allows one to be able to adjust different risk factors and see what their calculated risk is. But it also provides them a wealth of information. And we designed it in a way that there was a clinician tab and a patient tab so that whether it was a clinician who wanted to access the information or a patient who wanted to access the information, the information that was included was really directed to the appropriate audience, and they could make informed decisions accordingly. So Ty, you had a, a great first author paper in Archives of Internal Medicine about the ABCs of Cardiovascular Risk Management. I think it was 2004, 2005, a, a featured heavily cited article about the ABCs of acute coronary syndrome management. And now when you adapt the ABC paradigm, I guess you're starting off with A for assessment, which uh, your new tool does very well. And then you have antiplatelet therapy, you could think in your old ABC paradigm. Um, is it true that the current uh, recommendations for aspirin are still based on the old Framingham risk score of 10% or should clinicians think that the 7.5% threshold with the new risk score would also lead to aspirin use? So we don't have data that's looked at it specifically with the 7.5% cut point, but I think the nice thing about this risk estimator, and most importantly, is it gets people talking about risk. And I think that's one thing that gets undervalued and understated in a lot of these controversies or conversations. Really, this is about allowing a clinician, a care provider, to be able to gauge their patient and figuring out what that risk may be and how best to modulate their risk. We've recognized in the BPQI subcommittee that this is one of many such calculators, tools, especially digital tools to come in the future. And what we anticipate is really having a suite of prevention tools, in the case of atrial fibrillation, other tools, in the case of heart failure, other tools, that will allow patients to interact with their provider and make informed decisions. So we really see this as the first of many different products to come in the future. And I think the most important thing is we want tools that will help allow providers to be able to close those gaps in care and give the information really point of care. So you mentioned BPQI. Could you tell the audience a little bit more what that is? Sure. So this is a, what's become an increasingly popular subcommittee called the Best Practice Quality Improvement Subcommittee. And it was really commissioned a few years ago in trying to identify gaps in care. And once those gaps had been identified, figure out what were the right tools to close those gaps. Historically, we've used wall charts, tear pads, pocket guides that have sat in your lab coat. 
but we found that those are a bit antiquated in this day and age and inconsistent with the college's move towards the digital strategy, we're really trying to move into the modern age to give them tools that they would use in their home, in their work, in front of the exam room, in front of the patient. And so all of the interfaces that we've had will work on a smartphone, will work on a tablet device, or be usable at your desktop. So Ty, is there any thought to potentially using this paradigm that you already have developed to uh, maybe make it easier for patients to track calories or physical activity? Is that something that the college is interested in doing, or do the, does the college uh, in your committee think that there's enough other websites that they can, patients could get that information and track it? Well, I think the one neat thing about this risk estimator, perhaps it's unknown to most individuals, is all of the work was done in-house. We didn't outsource this to any other organization. And so I think we have the flexibility and the skill set within the college to really expand on this. I think the issue right now is just competing priorities and time commitments for those individuals. But I think anything's on the table, and we have the option of really having the good fortune of having some really talented people who can put a lot of this to good use. Well, Dr. Gluckman's going to be heading back to Portland, um, I guess home of Nike. I'll be going back to Baltimore, home of Under Armour. So we'll have to exchange some good Under Armour and Nike shirts when we get back. Duly noted. Well, thank this is Roger Blumenthal uh, from uh, the Dyslipidemia Community of Cardiosaurus, and thank you very much, Ty, for being here. Thanks, Roger. Thanks, Roger.